Uh, you always um, provide a way. So we just ask that you be a part of this planning process and we are trusting this to your care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, Henderson Settlement is almost to Tennessee. It's on the Tennessee-Kentucky line. And um, we're going to show you some pictures here in just a minute of what, sort of what it looks like. I mean, it is a picture of what it looks like. But one of the things that the reason they have work camps there for a couple of reasons, but one of them is to educate the church about what our ministry is within the church and also to help people down there. Uh, they may be without, uh, they may have holes in their floor, they may need a new roof, they may need new windows, they may just need their home, uh, now I never can remember that word, spray washed. Oh, or, power yeah, washed. Power washed. We did a lot of power washing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but one of the things is the settlement builds homes for people, about one a year. And so they want to keep those homes looking nice and in good condition. And so one of the things that we were doing was power washing there and power washing there at the settlement. So that's one of the reasons to go is also to educate the church, but also, you know, to help the people. They want us to come to learn, to love, and to understand the people. Appalachia runs from as far up to Canada as clear down, I have a place where it says, but clear down south. So there's no culture that you can say, oh, that's Appalachian people. They're all different. And even within the same community, they are all different. So just like we can't say, oh, well, you know, the Jacobsons represent LaGrange County. Well, maybe they do and maybe they don't, you know? So, you know, there's always those differences. This is a work camp. It serves as a bridge for the dreams of the people and then the reality that they do get some of their work done. They may have a roof that leaks, floors without, floors without holes, with holes. They may not even have running water. So there's a lot of things that they want, they sign up. They have to fill out a form and the man who's in charge of that, he talks to them, he goes to look at their project. So when you go there, you know that it's a legitimate project. It isn't something that somebody just said, oh, come to my house, you know, and do this. One of the things that we have to do, though, is any project we choose, we have to raise the money for that project, for the paint, for any other equipment and things. We can take our own tools if need be. You may want to be sure that they're locked up at night, you know, just anywhere else they disappear. And this is a serving and learning and learning by serving. So it's definitely a project where you learn, but you also serve the people there. And we're not a summer youth camp, and I'm reading this right off of what it mm -hmm. says here. It's not a summer youth camp. It's not a recreation is a priority. However, there's places to play volleyball and basketball, and there's evening times. I mean, we're done by like 4 or 4.30. So you have your evening free until it's time for evening program. Um, there's ample op ample opportunity to go hiking if you'd like to. We just ask, especially for young people, that you don't go too far off the premises, uh, or at least let somebody else know. Well, don't go more than two, no, less than two of you together. Anybody, adults or youth. Uh, this is a chance to experience a different culture, and as people and hopefully gain insight into the definition of mission. What we do, what is mission? We are here to accept the community. We're not gonna change them. We just wanna learn from them. What they're doing is acceptable to them and we don't wanna judge. You leave that judgment at home. Of course, we shouldn't have it anyway. But you don't make judgment on the people. We just learn from them. And they are so interesting. Whenever you, if we can get out into the community, and I'm hoping we can find a project or two that's close enough so that we can get to know some of the people because they are very interesting. And we, I know we've worked for one lady that's so, so sweet. And uh, the couple that I've gone with, they go out there every year. I mean, you know, she's uh, always willing to have you come in and wants to talk to you. And we usually take a lunch to her. They will give us, on Wednesdays is free day, and you get to do something. 
Now we've got a whole list that's pretty limited on what we can do. Um, I mean, it's a long list, but I don't think most of the kids are going to be interested in going to museums. Now tell me <laughs> if I'm wrong, but um, what you know, there's things to do. There's a water park that isn't too far away, and the uh, Pine Mountain State Park is fairly close, only a half an hour, and there's miniature golf there and pools there and uh, picnicking. So there are things to do that are fairly close, but I don't think you're going to want to go into town to a shopping mall and the movie theater mm -hmm. and, you know, that kind of thing. So we will let you help us decide what we do. And so the only thing is we'll need transportation. If we decide to split up and some want to do this and some want to do that, I don't have a problem with that because the adult will be driving the vehicle. So there would be an adult with you. And um, so anyway, that's the free day. So you work Monday through Monday and Tuesday. You're off on Wednesday and you work Thursday and Friday. So that's, you know, it's manageable. It will be hot. It will be hot. Uh, the group I've been going with has changed to September because it was so hot. Personally, I've taken the wrap type thing that you, when we went in the summertime, with, that you can cool with water because unless you're used to the heat, it is hot. So, but the attitude you come with is the type of week you're going to have. If you come with a good attitude and learning attitude, you'll have a good week. Yeah, I just would guarantee that. Um, so the other thing is the schedule and I'm going to share that with you. Um, but one thing is the key to community, community involvement, uh, is just getting to know the people in the community. And I mean, it's the community. I don't know if many of you have been down in Kentucky. I mean, the roads are like this. And so it's, you know, it's a distance. Um, that's, you know, the main thing is just getting to know the people and then we talked about the free day we've already paid uh the registration fee to register us and then we're going to have a breakfast to help pay for the other and hopefully some of you will talk to grandparents and people because it's 275 dollars a person is what it will be we have flyers for the breakfast okay and so before we go on with that since she just left with the I'm pictures. Okay, well, I was just going to have you um, show the pictures. Oh, that's Things not to bring are, well, they talk about fireworks. I don't think that's, but you can take your iPods. You can take your MP3 players. I don't know what all you guys call those things, as long as you have headphones, okay? So those, those are acceptable. And we'll look at... This is, this, oh dear, that's, <laughs> there's where we will be staying. That's the dorm. Um, the men stay on one end down here and the women on the other, on this end. The other end is a gathering room. And so, but that's the building where we all stay. And is that it? Nope. Oh, there we Here's go. The oh, there. One. There's a view of what it looks like. It's so pretty. I mean, it's just beautiful in the mountains, if you like mountains. And um, so that kind of gives you just an overview. Um, this goes back, I think that's back to the farm. And we won't be going back there, but that's one of the roads back there. And that's a good road <laughs> on the, on, around the area. And yeah, some job may be painting. They thought I could paint, so that's what I was doing. And uh, painting underneath side there. But there's a variety of jobs that we can choose. And in March, first week of March, they will put out the, what the jobs are. Some will be on campus. This was on campus. Others can be out in the community. But we don't want to go too far away because then we take all your time driving. So, and I think that may be all that I've nope. put on. Oh, but we're halfway through. Oh, we're halfway through? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have, uh, you guys as a group are a pretty young group and a pretty like able-bodied group. So um, 
that we're going to take that in consideration as we kind of pick up pick jobs because there are some groups that are older that we want to save some of those what we might consider like easier jobs leave those for them and us do a little bit more of the labor intense jobs there we were uh, i think they're staining the uh railing oh we stained a lot of railing <laughs> all the way around each one of those little pedestals I don't know how many railings we stained. And uh, so there's a couple of guys who were doing that. There it is, cleaning off the green stuff. I wish they'd come to my house and do that. This was the most boring job possible. I am holding the hose for her so she could do it. I'll volunteer to be the hose holder, fine. That's when they decided maybe you would want to go paint. Because that gets old after a while, just holding the hose there. But it really is almost necessary. Oh, I, I, yeah. I you almost have to ask somebody holding that hose as you're going along. And, uh, you know, they had the, um, whatever you call those things. What would you call that that runs the sprayer? Power washer? Power washer. That's just, that's what the power washer right, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, they didn't always work, right. but um, if anybody, if we decide to do a power washing job, if anybody has a power washer, we should probably take it. Okay. Everyone look at Nick now. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Um, I also, guys, uh, especially for our youth, um, Jeannie hasn't worked with you guys a whole bunch, but I have really talked you up, so I'm expecting <laughs> you guys to, like, really... Um, uh, you know, you guys have done a lot of service projects around here in our community and have had a really good attitude on all of those trips, all of those things that we've done. So I've told her that you guys are hard workers, so I'm expecting you to live up to that. Don't. <laughs> are you okay, Nick? Nick! Now, this is the do? part. He works, he works, works very work. hard for other people, He's just not you, Nick. <laughs> this is the cruncher of the deal. Morning devotions are held each morning at 7 o'clock. That's the hard part right That's there. The hard part. <laughs> and you are expected to be there. They do expect you to be there. And also then we need to go prepared to lead one of the morning devotions. And some people with instruments, yeah. we oh, okay. may want to use. I mean, you know, you nice. let you use that and be a part of it. That's always fun if we can add music to what we well, do. maybe we can get you, like, send the, the box drum with you or something. Oh, yeah. Because we've got a drummer with us, too, yeah. over here. If we could, you know, the instruments add so much. Right. And our group never had any. We didn't have anybody who could play the piano. We didn't have anybody who any instruments. But for the groups that did, that really added to the devotions in the morning. And uh, so that's one of the biggies is that early morning devotion. And then... They don't, I don't remember, I marked it on here. But every evening they have an evening program as well. And you're expected to go to that too. Um, the first night will just be a welcome and an overview and an explanation uh, by the work camp director. And then another night they will have um, somebody there who talks about, um, no, let's see, we had a group who came in to sing I'm trying to think what the others were. but And then they also will have um, somebody leading the closing devotions. On, that would be Friday, uh, either Thursday night or Friday night. Some people leave Friday morning, depending on you know what, what their schedules are. And about the only thing, the other thing, if anybody has any dietary needs, we need to know that. And then also, if you have gloves, be sure and take your gloves. And that'll be on the stuff we'll tell you to bring. But I think that pretty much covers everything that, unless people have questions, which I'm sure you probably will, or you'll think about them later, and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. So you will have to fill out a form when we get closer to the time. And, uh, but that's, oh, 10 o'clock is quiet time. I think it's 11 o'clock is lights out. And that, if you're going to get up at 7 a.m., you will be glad to have lights out. And, you know, for some of you, if that's an issue, 
a lot of people take the, you know, like a eye mask type thing if they think the lights are going to bother them because we had some early risers. I was the last one up every morning. <laughs> I'm not an early riser now. I did that all the time I was teaching, but I'm not now. So anything else that anybody has a question about or wants to know? How long is the drive down? Uh, we left Fort Wayne at 7, and we got there about 3. All right. And it's nice to get there, like in that 3 right. o'clock range, because you got to pick out your beds. Right. Unless you want to sleep on the top bunk, <laughs> you know. So it's really nice to get there early enough that you can get settled in before the evening program at 7 o'clock. Well, dinner is at 5. So, uh, if at all possible, from here, see, I left from Fort Wayne, so we would need to leave here. I'm close, you know, if we could leave close to 6 o'clock right. in the morning, it would be ideal that we could get down there then. And uh, we'll have to talk about how we're going to do the meals. Um, the group I was with, the meals were all paid for. We, I mean, we put, that was included in what we paid. So we want to talk about that. It's kind of nice, and then you don't have to worry about, especially with young people, mm -hmm. not being able to have money. And so that was, we may want to talk about building that into the cost beyond the, it's 275 for the eating and sleeping there. And then, it, then we you know, may want to add on, well, the gas money for those who drive down. And, uh, you know, we'll have to talk about that type of thing. So since we don't know for sure who's going and who's going to be able to drive, then we'll, we'll talk about that. But I thought from what you said, we were hoping to make enough money to cover all the expenses. Yeah, so um, we were thinking that uh, we would raise the money rather than saying this is the cost for each individual, that we would raise it as a team. Um, and so this is, we'll have like this fundraiser we're looking at of raising some money. In the last couple of years, this has been the Sunday where we usually do a camp fundraiser, but our camp fund is really healthy right now. So we don't actually need it for camp this year. So it's a perfect kind of other thing that's connected with youth, connected with mission for us to raise money for. So, um, and they usually raise a couple thousand at this breakfast. We're also, um, Jamel is, um, Jamel and Jeannie have both looked into the, the annual conference, um, offer several grants as well, um, especially for our youth. I think our youth, there's a couple different things and there's actually one that you guys can fill out um, to, to pay for your mission trip. So, you know, since half of our group who's going is youth, that cuts down the cost a whole bunch as well too. Have you heard anything yet? I mean, we sent it in, what day did I come last week? Mm, you sent it was in. It la I don't even it was know last what week, day we're yeah. It went in the but, mail last week. But they were having a meeting either this weekend or the weekend before. You sent it in in time. Oh, I just sent it last week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as soon as I finished it, we sent yeah. it in. So and then it should be hearing soon. And then the youth one, there's also youth ones that the kids can fill out individually. Right. Um, so um, we can set that up, like, I can pull it up on a laptop maybe during like Sunday school sometime and you guys can fill right. out the form. It's not a complicated form. They just want to know what you're up to. And, um, I, you know, I think several of you could fill that out and help with that as well. And then um, we also have, the church has an endowment fund that um, we could also apply for like a grant through the endowment fund. And- Is that local church you mean? Or it's the, the local church. Um, and the president of the endow chair of the endowment fund is saying here tonight, so I think we can get it um, So we have a couple different avenues that way too, and then if we need to do a couple more fundraisers down the line, we could do that. We have a couple youth who don't go to our church. They go to another church. One goes to Howe UMC, and one goes to Woodruff uh, Church, 
And so we might. Them double. Well, <laughs> what I'm thinking is that's two more churches that we could ask to support oh, them. Okay. Yeah. So what we might do is, and you know, beyond the pancake breakfast, maybe we do like a baking day here, and then we can set them up with like a bake sale at their churches to kind of raise some money there as well, or something like that. Because um, I really do think, you know, the, Henderson is a United Methodist thing, so we really want to invite Howe to be part of that. Um, well, and Woodruff they, has they're sent teams you. down several times. Yeah, yeah, and they have a connection with it. So mm -hmm. we want to give those churches an opportunity to support too. When we ask a church to support a mission trip, um, we're, at, we're inviting them to be part of the mission trip with us. And so one of the things that we do is like they're sending us when they help support us financially and then we come back and we share our stories with them so that if it's somebody like me who is not physically able to go on a mission trip they still get to be part of that mission trip mm -hmm. experience and still get to support serving so we want to give everyone we can an opportunity to to donate and to be part of that wasn't jimmy asked about going jimmy young yeah he can't, he go. can't go okay see and he's gone numerous times and that's the first time i right. went down is with them yeah so we have like a rough number that we sent in they do not need an exact number until april so um so if we know like if you're for sure you're not going to go please let us know as soon as possible so we can talk to some other people on filling that spot but we have some flexibility in that as well too or if you know somebody else who is interested yes you start talking it up and Oh, geez, I'd like to do that. Let us know because we still have openings Yeah. that we could, you know, take others, adult or youth, either one. Love to have people go, others go. The more we can spread the word about what the ministry is of the United Methodist Church, the better it is. Because it is a mission. It's been supported for years. I was going to look it up to see how long Henderson has been going, but it's been a long time. And years ago... Paul Gilman, his favorite was Redbird Mission. Mm, yeah. Henderson Settlement is part of the Redbird Missionary Conference, oh. but it is a separate entity of its own. Redbird has a school and that type of thing as well, but for some reason I got hooked up with Henderson, actually through Woodruff, and then that's been kind of my love, and uh, so I know about it. You know, I know where we're going, I know what's available, and um you know there's warm showers <laughs> there's more than one and uh they just do ask that you not take a long shower but you know you know that there's nice facilities for you what you'll be working with are not probably going to be quite as nice but you will have nice facilities and three meals a day that you don't have to cook or clean wait well, clean off your table but that's all you have to do you don't do the dishes you just clean off the table Any questions you guys have? Do you have any more examples of the type of work that you would do? And you, you talked about painting and power washing. I mean, what are some of the other, you know, kind of anticipated projects? Uh, the guys put in doors. Of course, they put in backwards the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that was just this past year. They have replaced windows. Um, trying to think what else we've done a lot of painting railings on uh and we we could do a little <coughs> bit more complicated projects because we are taking nick with us so um if they need a little bit more expertise so for how do we feel about that lydia can, yeah. can nick handle a complicated well he just needs several people keeping him on track yeah <laughs> that's that's oh, right but yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. in his head he can yeah. handle it usually the timeline just isn't the yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, we got to get it done. We can't go, oh, well, it's pretty close. See you guys. <laughs> yeah. I think well, this year is also supposed to be a cicada year. It is. That's, yeah. that's kind of random, but when we lived in, like, southern Indiana by oh Kentucky, the cicadas were so annoying. So those bring the your plugs. So afraid of them. Are sending this summer. Oh, so those were the 17-year yeah. yeah. cicadas, though, and they were, these are, they were so bad. These were are bad. ones from, like, the 1800s or something. A long, long, yeah, long, way long. Yeah. Yeah. Zika's afraid to walk down the street because yeah. they oh just like dive bomb us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. perfect. We'll send Zeke so out. Yeah. Like, it'd be deafening. Yeah. Yeah. There's like 500,000 people. 
bring your nose yeah. sample headphones. They love the smell of him or something. I don't know why. Cause they just like <laughs> we're obsessed with him. Okay, well, sorry. and if you're, you know, with the mosquitoes, uh, you would be sure to want to take oh, yeah, mosquito yeah. spray stuff. And uh, I was just gonna look here and see what last year what they were. Let's see, project list. It looked like there was a lot of like light remodeling. Type That's what stuff I was gonna there. say. It'd yeah. be nice to have like a little more hands-on building type of thing, mm -hmm. with a mix of easier jobs like me yeah. holding the hose type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in charge of keeping Nick on track. Yeah, they, yeah. Do they get into landscaping and things like that? You do a lot of brush cleanup or? Uh, now they did for this one lady. Now I don't know if that was, you know, a project. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. She, you know, but I know that like they had to, well, like her, I don't know, a nephew or somebody brought in the, the bricks or the stones, flat stones, what do you call those things? And he just kind of dumped them. And so the guys had to go right. in and, le you know, level the, the drive, or, you know, the area there, the walkway area, and then put them in this, put those stones in nicely. And uh, then sh some of them, a couple of the gals trimmed up her trees you know, shrubbery. Mm -hmm. So now whether that, you know, was just because they were friends of her, I mean, you know, just met her down, working, you know, down there. Um, and um, ramps, people who, you know, uh, as far as a ramp for handicapped accessibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that people have said is, you know, they, because job employment is, is, you know, male practically the unemployment rates very high and people say well why don't they move you know like to the city well where are they going to go you know and if you see some of these homes there is one home we went to i mean she has the most beautiful sort of like we looked out there as to the area of the you know like the mountain area and that i mean it's a beautiful beautiful view but you know that doesn't help her financially get her house right. fixed up and uh so that's what you know they they have no place to go yeah. they went to the city they would become the homeless of the city right. so at that least they have a, you know, yeah absolutely you know and i think one of the cool things with mission trips is like you go and you you see people and you're like well these people are in my town too yeah right and then you can kind of you can come back and be like you know we need to work on some of these things in our community too mm -hmm. so it can help you see even your own neighborhood in a different way once you've looked at it in a different community do they provide materials uh you pay they mm -hmm. have some we usually what whatever project you select they will have the material there for you but mm -hmm. you have paid for it ahead of time i got you so it's part of the cost gotcha. yeah mm -hmm. and so as we select projects our cost may go up from oh yeah the 275 there's the 275 is just the person that's the base that doesn't include the projects that were there. right so you're Nor building gas, a ramp now, now you're looking down. at yeah wood yeah. and all yeah. the other fancy stuff yeah, that's some expensive of them add up to, to like a thousand dollars easily and uh depending on how many projects you do and they will tell you how many people a project should take mm -hmm. and how long it will take so that helps you to identify what you want to do and i tried to get on it i don't know why i got home on it at home but now it's telling me it's password protected <laughs> Yeah, so they are on the website. There's two buttons actually. There's one that says password protected, and then there's one that's open. And it's not, it's not a real, it's not a, a completely accurate list, but they'll give you an idea because it's last year's list. So um, I can give you that information, Eric, and you can kind of look at them too if you want. Need to look more at it, but if you do, yeah, if you guys do want to look at that and if you have any suggestions, what we thought might be easy too, as far as like picking those projects, was to have. Uh, Jeannie and Jamel and Nick look at the list together. Um, and those come out in and, March, you said. Yeah, yeah and, yeah, and March, come up with said. and pick out some to like say, hey, we think this might be a good mix for yeah. everybody. I mean, I haven't went to Henderson, um, but I have done other types mm -hmm. of like work-based missions, and it's it's just a lot more fulfilling for you know somebody, right. particularly for kids, if you get an opportunity to learn as you right mm -hmm. as you do it, because uh, it's a great. It's a great opportunity to learn something, you know, how to do, how to, how to run a screwdriver, yeah. how to build a ramp, <laughs> right. how to use a saw, you yeah. know, any number of those type of types of things. And I've, I've 
as I've worked with different, you know, like Habitat and um, I went and did some work at an Indian reservation. Um, you know, being the communities are, are, are wonderful, and that's a, a very much an aspect of it too. But I've also working and being able to use and skills or learn skills is, is right. even more rewarding sometimes. I think there's that that learning skills and then having expert. I remember I went with Ray Hedstrom the year that Nashville flooded. <coughs> And we didn't go with Methodist. I can't remember what group it was. And they taught me how to drywall. I don't know how to mud or anything. Mm -hmm. But then there was this fine line between, are we actually going to get the job done? Because, you know, sometimes you feel like, oh, yeah, we can do that. And then you bite off more than you can chew. And you can't just leave someone's house, you know, with like half a wall finished or whatever. But there is that, like, completion of, like, we we did this project and saw it, I learned, and I saw it to completion. Yeah. Um, That's it's interesting when you talked about learning. I, we, I was drywalling, or whatever, mudding. Yeah. And every man that, excuse me, every <laughs> man that walked by told me a different way to do it. <laughs> I'm like, seriously, you know? So, yeah, but I learned how to do that. You know, it is one of those things that you learn to do. and. Uh, my daughter went to Louisiana when we went down there after the hurricane, and they were in a lady's house, and she learned to work in the bathroom and lay tile. Yeah. Right. And uh, so, you know, it can be a really learning experience as well. And that I would, one of the other things that you learn is that if it weren't for people coming in and helping them, it's not going to get done. They're going to have a hole, and it's not going to get fixed. They're not going to have, so they are. I remember when I was trying to mud and whatever, I'm like, this looks horrible. And the guy's like, oh, I have a wall. It looks wonderful. I'm like, it looks horrible. But he was just so glad that he had a wall, right. yeah. you know? And so what we might think is, you know, we might not accept from a contractor here. For them, it would not have been done if we would not do it. So it is very fulfilling to get done. I think it'll be a good experience no matter what the different projects are questions questions yes no questions Come down on. there on the end <laughs> 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 <laughs>